Hello, this is Robbie from Head in the Cloud Development, here to give you a demonstration of our SweetSign PDF bundle for NetSuite. This video is being recorded using version 2.4.2 of our bundle on NetSuite version 2022.2. The purpose of this bundle is very simple. What it does is it enables users to easily sign NetSuite records using any device with a touchscreen or even just a regular mouse pointer. SweetSign is a 100% native NetSuite app. There's no outside services involved, so you never have to switch apps or leave the security of your NetSuite instance. Now this bundle has been around since 2015, and you may have seen the previous videos on it. In the recent years, we've added in quite a few helpful new features that we'd like to highlight now for you. We now have support for second signatures on records. We allow you to add in custom fields to the signature process. The Signature Suitelet is now available without login, meaning that you can use it on your website, and we have support for virtually any record type. Without further delay, I'll show you a live demo here now. Now we're going to start from scratch here so I can show you how easy it is to implement this module. And you can do this right now. This module works free as a 30-day trial. To find the bundle, go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles. Just enter head in the cloud to see our bundles. The one you're looking for is here, Sweet Sign PDF ID 101345. So let's click on that and click the blue install button. Don't miss this documentation PDF as well. We'll reference this PDF in the process here. So we'll give it a minute here to install. Okay, now that it's installed, I'm going to go ahead and click this link to download the admin documentation. This will help us out along the way. Okay, now before we get into setting it up, let's think about what we want to accomplish here. Let's say, for example, we want to add signature functionality to our quotes. Let's pull up a quote. So when I print this quote, I'll show you what we're talking about. So what I have here is just a blank signature line for now, but the idea is, is that we would see a customer's signature right here on the quote printout. So let's implement that. To start, we'll go to Setup, Integration, HITC Suite Sign Config, New. This record is how we set up the parameters for the signature that will be added to the quote. For the record name, I'm going to call it quote customer, since it's the customer that will be signing the quote. The PDF file cabinet folder ID is where the signed PDFs get stored. So if we want to see these IDs, we can go to Documents, Files, File Cabinet. And I'll quickly mention that if you don't see the internal ID column, you can go to your Preferences and just make sure the Show Internal ID checkbox is checked. So I'm going to use just this contracts folder, so ID 12. And if we want an email to be sent out automatically after signing, then we just need to select an email template to use here. I'm going to leave it blank because it's not required. The custom print suitelet field isn't used very often. This is for if you aren't using a regular NetSuite printout, but a custom script printout is needed instead. This was more common back in the day before advanced PDF and HTML templates were applied to custom records, but nowadays you can almost always just use the standard templates. The advanced print template field is also not required because by default we're just using whatever the preferred print template is for the record we're signing. But if you need to override the template, you can set an ID here. The transaction custom form override, again, is only needed for item fulfillments. If we click on the field label, you'll see why. I'm going to skip it because we don't need to get into that for now. The data field ID is the field ID that the signature data will be stored in on the record. It defaults to this field that comes with the bundle. The date field ID, similarly, stores the date signed. The bundle comes with a field for this as well. So I'm going to set it to cust body, sweet sign, date, signed. And if you want the person signing to enter their name when they're signing it, you can add a field ID for that as well. 
And if you, as the user, want to receive an email when a signature is done from your login, then you can check this box here. I'm going to go ahead and click it so I get the email. And finally, by default, users land back on the record signed. If you have a signature page on your website, for example, and you want to override that landing page, you can enter another redirect URL here. So let's go ahead and save this record and move on to the next step. So after creating the configuration record, the next step is to update your print template to show the signature. So again, I'm going to click print on a quote so we can see what we're dealing with. So this printout comes from the advanced PDF HTML print template. So I'm going to edit that now. So we'll go to customization forms, advanced PDF HTML templates. And I'm going to find my preferred quote print form. Here it is. Now what I've added towards the bottom is a signature area. And there's a template for this if you want to copy and paste in the help PDF here in section three of the installation setup. But basically this little section here says that if there's signature data, then show it. Otherwise we just see a blank line under it. So now that our print template is set up, the next step is to, to deploy our user event script that will add the sign PDF button to the quote. So let's go to customization scripting scripts. My filter here is set to user event. So I'm going to look for the sweet sign user event script here. Now there are a couple of deployments here by default when the bundle is installed, but neither of them are actually deployed. So I do want to use the quotes, so I'm going to edit this deployment. I'm going to enable it. So when we come to the parameters tab, we see some defaults set here from the bundle installation. For our setup, on the main configuration, choose the quote customer one that we just created. And I'm going to clear the second configuration because we don't have a second signature set up yet. As you can see, this might be if we wanted to do an employee signature on the quote, but we'll get to that later. So I'm just going to save this. And now let's switch roles. Let's pretend that I'm out visiting a client and I need their signature on this quote in order to proceed. Now, of course, I might actually be pulling this up on an iPad or a touchscreen Chromebook or something like that. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use my regular computer here. So I'm going to click the Sign PDF button. And this layout is meant to work well kind of on any touchscreen device, even something as small as a, a phone or a small tablet. But so here I go as the customer signing the quote. When I click Sign PDF, we'll be returned back to the transaction record. And to see the signature, I could print the quote, but let's look and see. This quote would have been emailed out when I signed it. So here's the attached file. And here it is with my signature on it. So that's really it for the basic setup. Everything I show from now is optional extras. So as a slightly more advanced usage scenario, let's say we want to do signatures on an item fulfillment. And here maybe we want to capture two signatures, one from the customer and one from the user who is making the delivery. So let's go through the steps for this, again starting with the configuration record. I'm going to go to New Configuration. I'm going to name this configuration Fulfillments. I'll set the file cabinet ID to 12 again. Now this time the transaction custom form override field is important. This is because the packing slip is a totally different transaction form from the item fulfillment entry form. And the packing slip is the document that the signature goes on. So let me show you how to figure out what the packing slip form is. To do this, go to customization forms, transaction forms and we'll look for packing slip. 
Here it is, so we can see that my preferred packing slip form is ID 166. So we'll sit, set that here. I'll leave the data field set to the default, and I'm going to set the date field as well. Again, I'll click the checkbox to receive the emails, and then I'll click Save. We're done with this. Now again, the second step is to update the advanced PDF template. So let's find our packing slip template here. Here it is. And if I scroll down, then again, you'll see something that looks very similar to what we had on the quote. This shows the date signed. If there's any signature data, then we show it. Otherwise, we show a blank line that just says sign. And I've also added a section here for the second signature as well. Very straightforward. To see it in action, let's print this item fulfillment packing slip before we sign it. Okay, so with this, we have a blank date signed and a blank signature line here. So, let's not forget, we said we want to add two signatures here. The first one will be the customer signature, and we'll add a second one for the user. So first what we need to do is have a second data field that we can store the signature in. So for that, let's go to Customization, List Records and Fields, Transaction Body Fields. And what you want to create is something like this. The exact label and the ID don't matter so much. What's important is that the type is long text, and you want to make sure it's applied to whatever transaction types you want to use it on. So for me, it's item fulfillments. And I'm going to copy this field ID so I can use it in a configuration. Now let's create a configuration for this second signature. I'm going to start on my previous fulfillment configuration and just make a copy of it. This one I'll call Fulfillments Employee, and we'll use our new data field here. We could create a second date signed if they were going to be signing at different times, but for me the date on the first signature is sufficient. I don't need to receive a second email, so I'm going to uncheck this. So I'll go ahead and save this, and now let's go to our user event script and set up the deployment for the fulfillment. So I'm going to deploy it to item fulfillments, and I'm going to select my fulfillments configuration for the main one, and my fulfillments employee for the second one. And we can specify here what the second signature button is labeled as. I'm just going to call it Employee Signature. And let's save that. So now back on our fulfillment, we should have two signature buttons. Yep, one is Sign PDF and the second is Employee Signature. So first we'll do the signature as the customer. So as usual, I can see what I'm signing below to make sure it's right. I'm going to sign as Bob. And I've landed back on the record, so now I can sign as the employee. I can see Bob's signature here. Okay, and now to print it, just to see that the signatures are here, here they are. Bob and John have both signed. Now, one last trick to go over. What if we want to gather a bit more information from the customer as they're signing? What if, for example, we want to capture the condition of the shipment when they receive it? Let me show you how you can add your own custom fields to the signature page. We'll go to the Fulfillment Signature for the customer. And let's say that, for example, we want to set the Memo field from something the customer types in as they sign. 
To do this, we'll go to this HITC sweet sign custom fields tab, click the button for a new field. So we'll label it product condition. And the field ID we'll use, we'll just use the memo field. And we'll say that yes, it is mandatory. So now when a customer signs, they will have to enter this product condition. Let me show you what I mean. So if I sign the fulfillment again, we now have a mandatory product condition field. So now I've signed it saying that the condition is perfect and that value lands right back here on the memo field. Again, you don't have to use the memo, you can use any custom field you want. So this concludes the demo for now. I hope you find this tool as useful as we do here. At Head in Cloud Development, we're always open to ideas for making our products better. Please get in touch if you have product feedback or if you're interested in purchasing SweetSign PDF. You can email us at gurus at headinthecloud.dev.com or contact us through our website at www.headinthecloud.dev.com. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at Sweet World.